What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you today. So in today's video we're going to talk about the subdivision surface modifier and how we can use it to quickly add detail to our models without having to model out the very fine detail contained inside of those models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the subdivision surface modifier really does exactly what it sounds like it would do. It takes an object and it subdivides all of the surfaces on it. So let's Let's say, for example, that we were to do a Shift A, we we're going to add a cube. I'm just going to move this cube over, scale it down a little bit, and then we're going to apply a subdivision surface modifier to it. So to do that, you're going to click over into your modifiers, click the drop down, and click on subdivision surface. And so now let's take a quick look at what this did. So basically, what it did is it took our cube and it subdivided all of the surfaces in the object, which basically moved all of the vertices around and added detail to this object. And so notice how this only shows up in edit mode or in object mode. So if I tab into edit mode, for example, my cube is still here. So you can see how what that's doing is it's basically averaging out all of the different points in here and also adding a division around the middle. So it's basically dividing this once. So if we tab back into object mode, we're going to turn this up one, notice how you're going to get more detail in here. And so at its surface, that's basically what this modifier is doing. And so this is going to work with surfaces as well. So if you do a shift A and you add a plane, then you add that subdivision surface modifier, that'll also subdivide this flat surface. So you can see how this goes from being kind of straight along here to being kind of divided between these different points. So it's using a mathematical formula to figure out where that should be. And so notice how because this is a modifier, it's live, meaning if I were to tab into edit mode and then select one of these vertices, for example, that modification is going to happen live. So same thing if I was to tab into edit mode for this box, I was to move this around. Notice how that subdivision is going to happen live in here as well. So what that does is that gives us a lot of control over what's going to be created. And so real quick, let's take a look at another example and really kind of get an idea of what these levels are going to do. So let's go ahead and let's add a monkey. So I'm going to move the monkey over here. So it's facing the camera. And then I'm also going to duplicate it right here. And so let's say that we were to apply a subdivision surface modifier to this first monkey. So notice how, first off, this is mostly modeled as quads. So quads work the best with subdivision with subdivision modeling. So the mathematical formula works the best with quads. So just note that when you're modeling. But let's say that we were to add this subdivision surface modifier. We'll notice what that's doing is that's adding a bunch of detail in here. Well, one thing we can adjust is how much detail is added in our viewport and how much detail is added in a render. So for example, if you start really cranking this up, what you're doing is you're creating a lot of geometry in here that your system has to handle. So if you look at this, notice that this is creating a lot of geometry and the more you turn this up, um, the more that your system is going to have to handle that. That's fine if you're dealing with one monkey, but if you're dealing with a bunch of different monkeys or a bunch of different other things that have a lot of geometry in them, it's usually better to use the render version in order to control the number of subdivisions that are in your final product. So for example, right now, I might leave this subdivision modifier in here as one in my viewport, but then turn it up to four in my render. And so what that's going to do is let's go ahead and add a camera real quick. We'll zoom in a little and we'll lock this to our view. And then let's add a quick light. So we'll just use the sun for right now. We'll go into rendered mode. And we'll just turn that light up. Here we go, to something like that. So within our camera now, you can see how this is kind of blocky. But if you were to come in here and render this image like this, notice how the one on the right is actually the one that's way more detailed and the one on the left is less detailed. And so the reason for that is because, and we're going to jump out of our camera right here, but the reason for that is because within our shape, we actually had a lower render setting and a higher viewport. This one had a lower viewport and a higher render. So you can use that in order to kind of save your performance um, so that your computer doesn't start running really slow while it's trying to render all of this stuff out. All right, so now I want to take a look at a way to kind of control this because sometimes it gives you some weird results. So let's add a cube, remove that over, 
and then we're just going to tab into edit mode and just delete out the vertices that make up this back point and so one thing you could do here is kind of bevel this off to round it using the bevel tool but for this example let's say that we wanted to subdivide this in order to smooth this so that it has a curve across this face um, which probably isn't the ideal for this situation but that's okay what we want to do is we want to add the subdivision surface modifier right here well notice how what that's doing is that is coming in here and it's subdividing it across this face. But the problem is it's also subdividing it around the edges, which isn't necessarily what we want, right? So what we want to do is we want to control that by using something called edge creasing. And so what that allows us to do is that allows us to set which edges the subdivision surface modifier is going to look at. So for right now, for example, if we tab into edit mode and we're going to hit the two key to go into line select, but right now, all of these edges are being subdivided, right? So it's giving this kind of like weird rounded shape. Well, if you were to right click on this, there's an option here for edge crease. So as soon as you click on edge crease, notice how you can move your mouse. And when you move your mouse, what that's going to do is that's going to crease the edge, allowing you to set whether or not this modifier is actually going to affect it. So in this case, um, it, this didn't work because we only selected one edge. So let's go ahead and let's select all of these edges. So we're going to select them, right click, and we're going to click on edge crease. And we're just going to move our mouse. And so we move our mouse out. And notice how these edges turn purple. And what that means is that means that those edges are now being kept in place. So if we were to come in here and crease these, so right click, click edge crease, and then move our mouse, what we can do is we can set this so that these edges stay in place. And the only thing that's being subdivided is this edge or the geometry running along this edge right here. Well then, if I turn my levels up, I can get a smoother effect. So you can use that edge creasing to control what is actually subdivided inside of Blender. And so the other way that you can control this is you can control this by adding geometry. So let's say, for example, let's go ahead and add a cylinder. So I'm just going to move this over here and let's add a subdivision surface modifier. So first off, this is kind of problematic because the top face and the bottom face are ingons, meaning that they're not quad geometry. Well, when you don't have quad geometry in here, sometimes you can get some weird results kind of like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out this top face in edit mode. So now if we look at this, notice how our subdivision surface modifier looks fine on the top, but not on the bottom. Well, what we can do in order to adjust that is we can add edge loops. So if I was to tab in here and do a control R, remember that we can add edge loops inside of edit mode. So I'm going to click here I'm going to move my mouse down. Well, notice how when I move my mouse up or down, it's affecting where that subdivision is occurring. So you can see how what I can do is I can add an edge loop right here. Then I could also extrude this down and then scale it in like this. But notice how we're still getting a pretty pronounced and I'm going to move this up a little bit. Notice how we're still getting a pretty pronounced effect around the bottom here. Well, what I could do is I could add another edge loop right here and bring it closer to the edge. Well, notice how now what I'm getting is I'm getting this nice rounded effect at the bottom here. So by adding edge loops, you can actually control the way that that works. So another example is if I was to do a control R right here and add an edge loop and then scale it in. Notice how I'm getting a very long curving effect in here. However, and we may jump into wireframe mode just for a second. But now let's say, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this out so that we can see it. So we're gonna do it outward instead. But if we were to do a control B and bevel this edge, we're gonna roll our mouse button up like this. Notice how what that gives us is that gives us two edge loops around this central piece of geometry, making this much less of a curved effect and more of an effect that's pronounced around the middle right here. So we'll add one more cylinder. And then let's just kind of play around with this a little bit. So I'm going to select this face, move it down. We'll go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to this, but I'm just gonna extrude this up 
scale it out, extrude it up, extrude it up again, scale it in. So now I've got kind of this odd shape, right? But I can come in here and I can start adding detail. So I can do an alt click, control B to bevel this, control B to bevel it here. You can bevel it here as well. But notice how what that does is that start give that starts giving us a lot of control over the kind of shape that's created. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you been using the subdivision surface modifier in Blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.